In today's cursor review, I will be talking about the cursor that everybody has been talking about since it has been announced in the cursor community. The one, the only, the cursor that everybody is proclaiming to be number one cursor on the planet, Steel Vengeance. The tallest of its kind. The fastest speeds. The wildest maneuvers ever attempted. Upside down. Inside out, sideways, slantways, over and over and over. They're back and they're here with a steel vengeance. Frontier Town, Cedar Point, 2018. So yeah, there was that. And the instant that everybody took a look at that trailer when it was first posted, everybody... In the coast community was just blown away. I will admit I was a part of that bunch too. Just go check out my uh, reaction video to Twisted Timbers and Steel Vengeance that I posted nearly two years ago when these coasters were announced. Um, obviously you guys have already written Twisted Timbers. I've already done a coaster review on that. Go check that out if you haven't already. Now it's time to review the other new for 2018 iBox that I finally got to ride back in early June. Now, oh my gosh, where do I even start with this coaster? Because there is so much to be talked about, so much to be loved about Steel Vengeance, from this coaster's airtime, to its elements, to its length. And on top of it, for me personally, I was able to snag a back row, trimless rain ride. And if you guys don't know, RMCs in the rain slap really hard. And this is actually the second time that I've gotten to do an S-tier RMC in the rain, the other one being Lightning Rod. And naturally, I prefer back row on this coaster because the airtime is usually stronger back there and you get really pulled over the hills a lot more. But regardless, I mean, regardless of what seat you're going to sit in, Steel Vengeance is going to be absolutely phenomenal nonetheless. Just, if you want the best experience possible, obviously I'm pretty sure I'm not the first that I've said this, but go for the back row. Because that's where my best experiences have come from. Now, unfortunately, they do assign seating with this coaster, so you're, there's no guarantee you'll get back seat. Worst comes to worst, you can just ask for the back, and then luckily the ride up will give it to you. If not, try to at least snag back car, because that's what I had to do on one of my other rides. But yeah, as I said, there's just so much to love about this coaster from this coaster's abundance of airtime to all these terrific elements to the ride's length. I mean, what is there not to love about this coaster? I mean, the only problem I have with it is that there really is no 100% standout moment on this ride. And now I know what you're thinking is that because there are just so many great moments on this coaster, obviously it's going to be the blend that makes this coaster so good, but it just needs that one moment that just stands out above the others. Like take a coaster like El Toro, for instance, I mean, there's all these great elements, all these great moments on that ride, but the standout is that Rolling Thunder Hill. Take Lightning Rod for another example, there's all these terrific elements, you know, like the Outer Bank, uh, the Off-Axis Hills, but that big, obviously the big jaw dropper is going to be the quad down on that coaster. Regarding the moments on Steel Vengeance, the most popular moments on that ride tend to be that big Outer Bank turn, which that is a good moment. Uh, the drop off the mid course, that's also another popular one. My favorite one is probably those Finale Hills, because they remind me a lot of like the smaller RMCs, like Twisted Timbers for instance, you got that return run. Those finale hills on Steel Avengers remind me a lot of this return run on Twisted Timbers because they really do yoink you out of your seat. They're not the most sustained moments, that's probably the only beef I have with them, but they do give really good ejector airtime. And something that's worth noting is that as this coaster starts losing its speed and momentum, the layout is going to get tighter and more compact. And naturally, that's why I like the second half more than the first because while the first half you have a lot more speed so it's able to do all these bigger elements, the second half... The elements are a much smaller scale, but they're more intense, rapid fire, and because you're also weaving in and out of the structure, it creates a lot of head choppers, so I am a big second half person regarding this coaster. And real quickly, going back on topic of the first half, I find the drop to be very underrated on this coaster because everybody says it's a forgettable moment, in which while I can see that to a certain extent, the drop naturally was really good for me in the back row because... Since the crest on the top of the Vengeance lift hill is very wide, like Millennium Forces, it gives you that stomach dropping feeling and it also helps that it's a very steep drop, 90 degrees. So as of right now, Vengeance has my favorite drop on an RMC. And I feel like another very underrated moment on this coaster that not too many people talk about 
is actually that little mini wave turn that's in the second half after those two camelbacks. It really reminded me a lot of Lightning Rod's wave turn to an extent, but just on a much smaller scale. But given that it's inside the structure, so you're already getting really good head choppers at the same time, it really makes that element more intense. So yeah, the first drop and that mini wave turn are very underrated moments on this coaster in my opinion. But if those are unpopular moments on this coaster, it really just goes to show how many terrific elements that Steel Vengeance has. Because as you guys know, the first drop and wave turn are usually very popular elements on RMCs. Out of all the coasters that I have been on, this is by far the most stacked coaster that I have been on. And what I mean by stacked is that this is the coaster that I have ridden that relies the most on quantity. But it doesn't matter too much if a lot of that quantity is quality at the same time. In conclusion, I'm very happy I was able to return to Cedar Point this year and ride Steel Vengeance. Because as you guys know, this has just been the most anticipated coaster since the rise of RMC back in 2011 when its new Texas Giant opened. Everybody was talking about what RMC Main Street will look like, and we finally have our answer, and it was definitely well worth the wait in my opinion. So for its final score, Steel Vengeance is going to get a perfect 10 out of 10 from me. So for those of you that are watching and haven't ridden Steel Vengeance yet, get out to Cedar Point and ride this coaster. This coaster alone makes the trip well worth it. Anyways, that about does it for this coaster review. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.